Come on, this journey has only just begun. It's time to move on and follow the coastline and head for the Bay of Plenty. With a name like this, you've got to know that this region is going to be a fantastic place to visit. More than a thousand years ago, this was the landing place of the giant canoes bringing the first peoples of this land, the Māori, from Polynesia. The name Bay of Plenty was given by another great explorer, James Cook, during his circumnavigation of New Zealand in 1769. For our great expedition of 2006, let's head down the coast. The breathtaking Pacific Ocean dominates the Bay of Plenty, creating surf beaches, safe harbours and an expanse of crystal clear turquoise water that stretches as far as the eye can see. The beaches sweeping down the coast from Waihi Beach to Makatu are the key reasons thousands of holidaymakers visit the Bay of Plenty each year. This is where you'll find the most popular and safe beaches anywhere in New Zealand, and so it's hardly surprising that water is the fundamental element of the region's leisure and economic activities. The Bay of Plenty has a range of water activities from swimming with the dolphins and kite surfing to parasailing and sea kayaking. Blow carting. It's like sailing on land and the concept was invented right here in the Bay of Plenty by Mount Monganui based Paul Beckett. It looks amazing and it is. You can use a blow cart just about anywhere and you can try one out on the world's only purpose built blow carting track at Blow Cart Heaven for a thrilling adventure. In the water now and it's the surf that draws the crowds. Mount Monganui's reputation as the surfing capital of New Zealand was reinforced in late 2005 with the addition of New Zealand's first artificial surfing reef. The new surf reef is 250 metres offshore and is designed to produce fast peeling, tubing, left and right hand waves, suitable for competent and experienced surfers. If you love fishing, then great news. An abundance of game fishing and snapper fishing can be found along the coastlines of Mount Monganui and Papamoa. Tauranga Harbour has an all-weather entrance, giving access to spots such as Mare Island, Mōtiti Island and various reefs. Two large marinas hold over a thousand yachts and launches, with many charter boat operators ready to serve visitors. A must-do for visitors is to visit White Island, New Zealand's only active marine volcano. White Island is a living, breathing, ecological giant that can be reached by helicopter or launch. Once passengers arrive on the island, they spend one to two hours on a guided tour of the crater. Walking on the island is like walking on the moon. No vegetation survives the harsh, acidic environment inside the crater. Instead, beds of yellow and white sulphur crystals grow amongst hissing, steaming fumaroles. Dolphin Seafaris offers visitors New Zealand's best dolphin and swimming watching location. Passengers cruise the blue waters in search of these magnificent creatures in their natural habitat, as well as other marine and bird life. Swim with the dolphins or take photos from the comfort of a 50-foot, two-level catamaran. Trips are skippered and guided by marine naturalists who provide an educational and entertaining commentary. back on land now and it's hard to miss the fact that you're in the middle of kiwi fruit country. More than 80% of the country's kiwi fruit is grown in the Bay of Plenty. Kiwi 360 is a horticultural tourist attraction based on the kiwi fruit, one of New Zealand's most recognisable icons. The property consists of 13 and a half hectares of park-like grounds. Visitors gain an insight into the unique conditions in this area, which support the production of the highest quality kiwi fruit in the world. They can take an orchard tour, which provides a close look at the growth cycle of the phenomenal green and gold kiwi fruit, as well as viewing the post-harvest facilities. <laughs> 